journalist would like you to uh, just comment on uh, your world view or your, your view of the of the interpretation of the UFO phenomenon, which was prevalent in the old days, that it was an extraterrestrial investigation of Mother Earth from outside this planet, uh, directed uh, and uh, elusive, but still uh, sort of a purposeful investigation, the ET, uh, the ET uh, hypothesis, you may call it. Uh, would you make some comments on uh, where we stand today yeah. relative to that uh, relative? Yeah, I'd like to, just to start from the history of history of science standpoint that any culture will tend to interpret uh, any new phenomenon in terms of its own technology. Had this all occurred in um, the Middle, Ages. Middle Ages, it would have been given a totally different interpretation of a religious interpretation. Which it was, was Which it was at that time. We've entered the space age, therefore it is very logical for a new phenomenon of this sort to be interpreted in, the, in terms of our own advanced technology. Um, it's also complicated by the fact that astronomy has arrived at the point, we know enough now about the evolution of stars, to make it extremely likely that uh, there are many other intelligences in the universe. But there, I think we have to follow Arthur C. Clarke in pointing out that we take perhaps a much too narrow view of what intelligence in the, light, in, in the universe may be. We live on a water planet. It's very logical, therefore, that our, well, our bodies are mostly water. It could be that our consciousness uh, expresses itself through protoplasm and through our particular chemistry. Um, there are bits of information today indicating that, now, for instance, Sir George Wald at Harvard feels that consciousness is the most important factor and that consciousness can exist in many forms. We are one of those forms. So, hey, as somebody said, the whole question of this trying to communicate with life elsewhere is like the not yet born talking to the long since dead because it takes so long for anything to get. Furthermore, an advanced civilization might regard radio as we regard jungle drums or smoke signals. They may long since have passed the radio stage of, of communication. But still, I think it's important that the SETI program continue because it, it is, it's, a, it's an adventure and should be done. And it would be philosophically important to find out that there is some intelligence elsewhere. Um, so, all that I, my own philosophical feeling about the UFO phenomenon is that when all is said and done, it represents some form of intelligence. But whether that intelligence is from great distances away, or whether it is perhaps much closer to us in a parallel reality or in another dimension, or whether it is in some strange way a product of our own intelligence, our own psyche, I don't know. This is the, this is the research problem. That, it's in, that it seems to be programmed, that it seems to have an intelligence of its own, I think is unmistakable. If anyone who studies the subject just sees that. But the, we must not jump to the conclusion that because it has an intelligence of its own, it is necessarily visitors from outer space. It may be in some strange way connected with that intelligence, if that intelligence can in some way project itself down here. But, uh, well, anyway, that's really all I have to say. That's, uh, mm -hmm. that's it. Good, thank you. That's not too bad, that.